I stood at the back of the Grand Cathedral, the heavy scent of roses and lilies mingling in the air with the faint musty odor of ancient wood and incense. My heart pounded in my chest, a mixture of excitement and nervousness that churned my stomach. Today was supposed to be the happiest day of my life, my wedding day. The grand organ began to play, its deep, resonant notes echoing through the vast space. The guests turned to face me, their eyes filled with anticipation and joy. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my nerves, and started down the aisle, my white dress rustling softly with each step. The candles lining the aisle flickered, casting a warm golden glow that danced on the polished marble floor. As I walked, I caught the scent of my favorite perfume, a gift from my soon-to-be husband, Daniel. The sweet floral fragrance was a comforting reminder of his love, a beacon of warmth in the cold, vast cathedral. But as I approached the altar, a sense of unease settled over me. Something felt off, though I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Daniel stood there, his back to me, speaking with the officiant. His posture was tense, his movements jerky and uncharacteristic. A shiver ran down my spine, and I pushed the feeling aside, attributing it to my wedding day jitters. Finally, I reached the altar, and Daniel turned to face me. His eyes, usually so warm and inviting, were cold and distant. The scent of his cologne, usually a comforting blend of cedarwood and spice, seemed unusually strong, almost overpowering. I forced a smile, hoping to shake off the growing sense of dread. The ceremony began, the officiant's voice a soothing drone as he spoke of love and commitment. But the feeling of unease only grew stronger. The air around us seemed to thicken, becoming almost tangible. It felt like I was suffocating, each breath a struggle. When it was time for the vows, Daniel's voice was low and hollow, devoid of the emotion and love I had come to know. His words felt rehearsed, mechanical, as if he were reading from a script. I glanced around, hoping to find some reassurance in the faces of our friends and family, but their expressions mirrored my own confusion and concern. As I began to recite my vows, a strange metallic taste filled my mouth. I hesitated, my tongue feeling heavy and clumsy. The words felt foreign, as if they were not my own. A cold sweat broke out on my forehead, and I felt a wave of nausea wash over me. Then, it happened. The cathedral doors flew open with a deafening crash, and a freezing gust of wind swept through the room. The candles flickered wildly, casting chaotic shadows on the walls. A low, guttural growl echoed through the space, sending chills down my spine. The guests gasped, their eyes widening in terror. Daniel's grip on my hands tightened painfully, his eyes locking onto mine with an intensity that bordered on madness. The scent of his cologne was now sickening, mixing with the acrid smell of fear that permeated the air. A figure appeared in the doorway, silhouetted against the blinding light from outside. It was tall and gaunt, its features obscured by the darkness. As it stepped into the cathedral, the temperature plummeted even further, and a thick fog began to roll in, swirling around our feet. The officiant's voice faltered, and he took a step back, his face pale with fear. The figure moved forward with a slow, deliberate grace, its eyes glinting with malevolence. As it approached, I felt an overwhelming sense of dread, my body trembling uncontrollably. Who dares to interrupt this sacred ceremony? The officiant demanded, his voice wavering. The figure stopped at the foot of the altar, its presence commanding and oppressive. It raised a skeletal hand, pointing directly at Daniel. A voice deep and resonant echoed through the cathedral, sending shivers down my spine. This union is cursed, the figure intoned, its words reverberating through the air. The bride has been deceived. The groom is not what he seems. I turned to Daniel, my heart pounding in my chest. His eyes were wide with fear, his face pale and drawn. The guests murmured in confusion, their eyes darting between us and the figure. What are you talking about? I demanded, my voice trembling. 
Daniel, what is this? Daniel's grip tightened even further, his eyes pleading. I... I didn't want to tell you, he stammered. I thought I could keep it hidden, but it's too late now. The figure stepped closer, its presence overwhelming. The smell of decay filled the air, mingling with the scent of roses and lilies, creating a sickening miasma. The fog thickened, wrapping around us like a shroud. Reveal the truth, the figure commanded, its voice echoing in my mind. Show her what you truly are. Daniel's body convulsed, and he let out a guttural scream. His skin began to ripple and shift, his features contorting in a grotesque display. The guests gasped in horror, their faces pale with fear. I watched in stunned disbelief as Daniel's form twisted and morphed, his human features melting away to reveal something monstrous. His eyes glowed with an otherworldly light, and his skin turned a sickly shade of gray. His fingers elongated into sharp, claw-like appendages, and his teeth grew into jagged fangs. No, I screamed, stumbling backward. This can't be real. The figure's voice echoed in my mind, a sinister whisper that sent chills down my spine. He has deceived you, bride. He is a creature of darkness, a demon in disguise. Tears streamed down my face as I looked at the monster that had once been Daniel. The scent of decay was overpowering, filling my nostrils and making me gag. My heart shattered, the realization of the truth cutting through me like a knife. Daniel, or whatever he truly was, reached out to me, his eyes filled with desperation. Please forgive me, he begged, his voice a distorted echo of the man I had once loved. I didn't want this. I never wanted to hurt you, but it was too late. The figure raised its hand, and Daniel was engulfed in a blinding light. His screams echoed through the cathedral, mingling with the cries of the terrified guests. I covered my ears, my body trembling with fear and sorrow. When the light faded, Daniel was gone. The cathedral was silent, the fog dissipating as quickly as it had appeared. The figure turned to me its eyes piercing through my soul. You have been spared, it said, its voice a haunting melody. But the darkness lingers. Be wary, bride, for the shadows are ever watchful. With that, the figure vanished, leaving me standing alone at the altar. The scent of roses and lilies was now tinged with the acrid smell of fear and decay. The guests slowly began to stir, their faces etched with confusion and horror. I fell to my knees, the weight of the truth crashing down upon me. My wedding day had turned into a nightmare. The man I loved revealed to be a monster. The cathedral, once a place of joy and celebration, was now a tomb of shattered dreams and broken promises. As the days turned into weeks, the memory of that fateful day haunted me. The scent of roses and lilies, once so comforting, now filled me with dread. I couldn't escape the feeling that I was being watched, that the darkness was still lurking, waiting to claim me. The whispers began soon after, faint at first, but growing louder with each passing night. They filled my mind with a sinister chorus, a reminder of the horrors I had witnessed. The scent of decay lingered in the air, a constant reminder of the darkness that had touched my life. I knew I could never truly escape the shadows. They were a part of me now, a constant presence that haunted my every waking moment. The figure's words echoed in my mind, a chilling reminder that the darkness was ever watchful. My life had been irrevocably changed, my dreams shattered by the revelation of the truth. The man I had loved was gone, replaced by a monster that had deceived me. The cathedral, once a symbol of hope and happiness, was now a place of terror and despair. I could only hope that one day I would find a way to banish the darkness and reclaim the light. But until then, I would live in the shadow of my wedding day, haunted by the memory of the man I had once loved and the nightmare that had torn us apart. For in the end, the darkness is always there, lurking just beyond the edge of the light waiting to claim those who dare to venture into its depths. And I had ventured too far, losing myself in the shadows, 
forever changed by the horrors I had witnessed on that fateful day.